Hello and welcome to this podcast uh, from the Specmatic team. I am Hari Krishnan. I'm the co-founder and CTO of Specmatic. I will be your host today. I'm thrilled to introduce our featured guest, Marcus Oberlehner. Uh, Marcus is an industry thought leader and a uh, senior full-stack engineer with expertise in Vue, Nuxt, and a passion for test-driven development. He's a seasoned uh, practitioner of React, Next.js, and Remix, as well as an avid Node.js enthusiast. Marcus also is exploring uh, and learning machine learning right now, and he considers himself a true ML Padavan. Uh, how are you, Marcus? I'm good. Good to be here. That's great. So why don't we start off, Marcus, with your uh, general experience in terms of the current state of affairs uh, and building applications. I know you come with a lot of expertise with single page applications and server-side rendering. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on the current state of the uh, industry and difficulties that teams are facing and your general ideas around that. Yeah, so I think, of course, one big thing that's currently in the in the room is, is the, the, um, how AI will affect development in the future. And this is also something I think a lot about. But what was mostly on my mind in, in the recent months was... Uh, how can companies who just start out with with going into the direction of more microservices based architectures or even going into the direction of, of migrating to the cloud, how can they solve the problems they face when doing so? Because I think what we currently still struggle uh, is that there are no really, not a, a lot of, of best practices that are broadly communicated and I think that's an important topic we, we currently still need to tackle and of course yeah there is also the topic of AI and that is something that's also very on the top of my mind that's great thanks for bringing those two topics up those are close to my heart as well especially with microservices the promise was that we'd all have like uh, you know the next thing next best thing to bake bread and we could all ship services independently and you know make progress, but that's hardly the case. And especially with front-end teams that I work with, often they are often complaining that uh, I cannot start building independently, I cannot deploy independently. Uh, that's been a very uh, often uh, cited issue. What is your experience in terms of that? Yeah, so I think. Um... One big problem that hides behind all this is that many of us coming from a world where we have where we have batteries included frameworks, like when you come from a Rails world, for example, with Ruby on Rails, you have a framework where you basically are on Rails, so you can you can not really deviate, but that's also a good thing because uh, with with a framework like this, you you know exactly how to solve certain kinds of problems because the framework is telling you how to do it. But what we are now facing in in the, in the front end world a lot, and also in the in the front end world in combination with the the microservices back end world is that it's that there is more flexibility, but the flexibility also comes with the cost that that we need to figure out a lot of this stuff ourselves. And one big problem I, I see there is that that there is this, this problem of not knowing what you don't know. So a lot of teams get started with, with building microservices and get started with using React to build the front-end application because that's the way you do it nowadays. But because there's so much flexibility, First of all, you have a hard time choosing the right tools that, that fit your needs. And also you don't know, maybe you don't know that you need something like, uh, uh, that you need a different technique for testing, for example. You don't know that because you only know what the, the frameworks provided you and now with, with a more custom architecture, like it is mostly with microservices you need to figure out a lot of this stuff yourself. And 
if you don't even know that you have a problem that you need to solve, uh, it's obviously it's hard to, to solve the problem. And even if you know uh, that you, for example, that you need to find a way how you can test your application in the context of this microservices architecture, then there are not really the rails laid out for you as it is with, with those um, more batteries included frameworks that rely on a traditional monolithic architecture. So I think this is something where we have a lot of work to do and I'm not quite sure what's the best way to, to tackle this because in the case of frameworks, there is the framework as an authority which can state, yeah, if you if you need to test your application, you can use those tools and you can use those techniques. And there is this one single uh, information source where you can get and where you can learn how to apply certain best practices. But with microservices architectures and maybe even with, with micro frontends, there is no single authority which can say, yeah, you need to have tests in place and you need to have a CI pipeline that solves those and those, uh, this and, and that problem. And that means you have to figure out all of this yourself. And this in turn means that you need to have a very high level of expertise and a very high level of, of uh, maturity in your teams. And yeah, as I said, not quite sure how the best way is to, to solve this. I try uh, to educate people more like uh, with, with talks and, and articles and, and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely a harder problem to solve for, for companies and teams when they go a route where they don't rely on, on a monolithic architecture, but microservices. Uh, I can completely relate to that. All of the snowballing into an integration hell when all the microservices and front ends come to that last point and then mm. figure out their issues. And uh, what has been your experience with this, that uh, oh. rework usually that happens with integration? Is that something that also uh, has been a, a, an issue with the teams that you've been working with? Yeah, what I noticed is that it's very easy to fall back into old habits. And if you are coming from a, a monolithic application and now you say you want to go microservices, it's very easy to build a distributed monolith instead of a truly microservice oriented architecture. And this is something I, I think we struggled in the past with. So that although we, we wanted to build truly independent microservices, which are truly well, which are decoupled from each other and, and can deploy it independently. We didn't, we didn't solve all of those problems that microservices are supposed to, to solve. So maybe we, we had the, the in the independence deployability in theory, because, yeah. you know, it was a, it was a standalone pipeline for, for each microservice, but in practice, if you can't know that your microservice you are just deploying works with all the other services, then is it really independently deployable? Yeah. Not really, I think. And, and this is something we, we struggled with. Uh, I'm curious to know, like, you know, the, my first introduction to you, Marcus, was through your brilliantly written article about contract testing and the views on it and how it helps in this particular area. So maybe you could, it'd be great if you could share your experience as to how you came upon discovering contract testing itself and mm. how your uh, personal thoughts have evolved around that area over time. Mm. Yeah. So I think typically contract testing is, is when you think about contract testing, it's all about testing that uh, services work together so that the, the, the contracts between services are in check, but I'm coming more from the front end world and, and thinking more about, about front end application and applications and how they integrate in the microservices architecture. So probably my point of view isn't the most obvious one when, when we talk about contract testing, but still it, it helped me a lot to, to see the value in it because the problem I faced was, okay, so now we had this microservices based architecture and we had a couple of front end applications 
as consumers and we wanted to test our front-end applications in isolation and different teams solved this or tried to solve this problem in different ways and this is exactly what i said previously about there are no agreed upon best practices because there was one team that had mostly real end-to-end -end tests so which didn't test their front-end application in isolation but together with all the microservices which which meant that the tests were, were slow that they were flaky and also that they couldn't test everything they needed to test because they don't have control over the microservices during the test run or very limited control you can't say yeah for this test uh, i need this uh, this data set for example it's not really possible or at least it wasn't really possible in our with our setup and then there were other teams that used uh, mocking so they, they mocked all the requests to the microservices and this is although this is a, a way to go um it, it only worked for but like, only really worked for our single page application. So for our purely client side rendered applications with mocking, we, we could solve this problem. But then we also had applications that were not purely single page applications, but we were going more and more in the, in the direction of having, having uh, client side applications that have a, a BFF or client side applications that or front end applications that have traditional server side rendering. And when this is the case, then all the requests that your front-end application makes to the microservices are now going through the, the uh, back-end layer. So you can't really mock your, your requests anymore. And this is where I was thinking hard, how, how can we solve it? And then I already knew there's uh, contract testing, but I uh, mostly thought about it in terms of testing the contracts between microservices and not so much about uh, how we can use it for for front ends but when i had this this uh, click moment in my head when i realized oh yeah uh, especially the way how how Spagmatic is doing it by relying on on open api specifications for for the contracts then i realized yeah we can use those open api specifications that we want to write anyway because we want to go an api first route we can use those to to run stub servers and now the stub servers we have control over them so we can tell the stub server hey when this test runs we need uh, those data and, and when the other test runs we maybe need an error response because we want to make sure that error handling works correctly and now this was possible again um, and, and this was really a revelation for me to uh, finally find a solution, how we can test this front-end applications that now have a server-side layer again and don't uh, need to mock requests made from the client-side part of our front-end application to the, to the server-side part, but can test the whole application and only, only stop the, the requests made to, to the microservices. And this is a, I think this is the way to go. And this is one of those best practices that I think are not really common knowledge yet. So a lot of teams have either no solution or not really good solutions. A lot of teams I see are are having real end-to-end tests, for example, with the problems I described earlier, or, or don't test things that are hard to test and stuff like that. And, and I think we need to get better at this. And I think this is, at least for now, uh, the best way I see to, to achieve this. That's great. And in fact, what I can relate to is the point you were mentioning, right? The hard to test aspects of a front end application, like, you know, what if the back end is slower to respond? Or what if there is an error in the back end? Simulating that is hard, even in a higher environment. But if you are, you know, mocking it with a tool like Specmatic, you could potentially do fault injection there and then test how front end itself in isolation behaves. And yeah, that. Testing applications, be it microservices or UI frontends, in isolation is really critical because that's when we get quick feedback. So completely agree with you on that. And uh, your uh, 
in 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 the future like you know like you said this is an area which is not uh common knowledge yet i think people are still warming up to the idea uh so what would do you think uh this this should, idea should evolve in the future into and especially given your leanings on uh, ml and ai and how testing is evolving with that and uh, if you put that context in in mind how do you suppose contract testing and contracts api contracts in the future mm-hmm. how would that pave a way for teams to work uh, in a more productive manner any thoughts on that i think the teams that already are using good best practices teams that already are practicing uh, api first approaches for example and and teams that already rely on test stream development will have an even bigger advantage in the future i think it already without ai it makes a lot of sense to work api first to work in a test driven manner and, and to have uh, contract testing and stuff in place but it will give those teams that already practice those things a head start i think when they when they uh s- switch to tools that that uh generate code for them using the ai technologies because when we look at current llm technology most of us know already at least the basics of how it works it can only be as good in predicting the next thing as as the input makes it possible to predict a good or to make a good prediction and if uh, the more context you give it the, the better the prediction will be and what i mean by that is that if you tell your ai programmer to please program uh, this or that feature for me without any further context that will most certainly not be a code that you can use in production in your application as it is if you write a feature for an existing application at least you need to write it with, with the code of your existing application and it will already be better uh, if you do that but if you give it more more context like you do when you work in a way where you have specifications first where you have uh, like like this api first and where you have your your tests already in place and where your tests clearly state the the outcomes you want to achieve the better the the result or the better the predicted um, perfect result from from the ai will be so if you apply current best practices i think it will help you very much in in building applications with the ai systems in the future so currently if you think about best practices for for product teams building building digital products is you you start that out with with user research so you ask your users while you try to find out what your users really need what outcomes they want to achieve with with your application because otherwise you're just building features and you're building a feature factory and maybe your features work good or, or not but if they don't do what what your customers need then they are worthless regardless of of how how well you program them and so you, you start out with re- user research and then you have user stories based on this user research and this is your first bit of context of very valuable context not only for the ai system but also for for human developers so that's the nice thing about about working uh, about already using best practices that now that will help you in the future is that they already work now and many are already doing them but a lot of people are not doing them so from this you can uh, have certain acceptance criteria for example if you are working in the in the healthcare industry your acceptance criteria can be that it's very reliable or if you have uh, if you are an e-commerce e-commerce maybe an acceptance criteria is that you survive the black friday uh, request uh, search and stuff like that and again you have more context now you have the user story and you have uh, acceptance criteria and from that you can write your automated tests which make sure that that you fulfill the acceptance criteria and that you fulfill the outcome that is specified in, in your user story and again you have more context and with with all this context now it's very likely that the the AI system will pro- 
will gen will generate a better outcome than it would if you just simply say, hey, build this or that feature, because now it knows the intent and now it knows exactly what are the criteria the code needs to fulfill that that the test passed and stuff like that. And you will reach a better outcome doing doing it that way, but you always also have the tools you need to deal with certain shortcomings of AI systems. So uh, the AIs, as most of us already experienced, are prone to hallucinations, for example. So they make up stuff that that looks plausible or sounds yeah. plausible, but it, it doesn't really work. And, and if you don't have automated tests in place, and if you don't ensure, maybe even if you let AI write those tests, but if you don't ensure they are correct, then you have no way of knowing if what the AI produces for you is correct. And, and so those are all important pieces, I think, even now, even without AI, but they will become essential when we have AI systems, especially automated tests in some way. So in, in some way, checking if if the changes a system makes are, are valid and, and do what we expect it to do. I think it, it will be mission critical to have really solid automated tests in place in the future, even more so than, than now. I think that's a very nuanced view and I'm glad you, uh, you know, went into such detail. It's not just about magic, right? AI is not magic. There is hard science and engineering. And like you said, there has to be that checks and balance. Even if you are generating both the source code and the test, they both have to have some sort of a guardrail. And that's exactly the kind of thought process also we uh, are aligned on. Uh, by means of making specmatic, you know, taking open API specs and making them executable contracts gives free tests, but then that's acting only as a guidance for the rest of the pieces. API specifications are indeed acceptance criteria for the API, one sort of an acceptance criteria. And um, also, like, it's a good point which you brought up, which is how we slice our, uh, you know, the stories and the acceptance criteria, like, we call it the illities uh, uh, slicing, which is the reliability, scalability, all the illities. So all of those good practices definitely uh, add up. And it's not just about like, suddenly I'm in the AI age, I don't need to worry about any of the, the good stuff that we've learned. The fundamentals still matter. And that's what will actually amplify uh, with AI. So yeah, it's good actually put. And what would... Uh, be your advice for someone who's embarking on the journey of, like, say, adopting contract testing or new to it, uh, and what would be your, uh, you know, general suggestion as to where they start and what they focus on? Because I see a lot of confusion when they take it on. It looks like a very daunting topic, and then uh, people shy away from it or actually have bad experiences and, like, you know, they leave out such a beautiful technique. I'd love to hear from someone who's been a, a practitioner and a thought leader in this area to talk about. So if you are not familiar with, with something like testing, then it seems like, like such a, a big thing. It's, it's like this, this, this confusing big uh, topic and you, you don't want to have to do anything with, with, with it. So, and I experienced this with, with a couple of things. So when I was new to testing, testing was for me this. This, this must be complicated. So in my head, there was uh, testing is this this complicated thing, and it, it must be above my my pay grade basically. So and and then you get into it, hopefully because you are motivated be because of some reason, and then uh, you you notice that uh, no, it, it actually isn't that complicated. So this would be my my first advice is don't assume that something you want to learn or you need to learn is is uh, too complicated for you. I had uh, recently, I, I was um, I was learning a little bit about machine learning and I was completely new to the topic and I was completely new to even Python. So I, before I never wrote a single line of Python. And so this was, was machine learning must be very complicated because there lo is a lot of maths uh, involved and, and then there is this uh, program programming language I don't know. So it's this huge, uh, really, this, this huge barrier to, to entry, uh, I thought. And then 
I had some idea and this idea, what I want to solve with, with machine learning and this idea uh, sparked a lot of motivation. And then I realized um, that that if you go step by step, actually, it's it's not that hard. Things are not that hard, especially things that are already established in, in the community, like with machine learning. Of course, the 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 science behind it is, is hard, but if you are a, a, a regular machine learning engineer, you don't have to fully grasp the, the science behind it, at least not at the beginning. And this, so this is a recommendation. If you want to learn anything, but for, for the matter of this podcast, if you want to learn more about contract testing uh, or testing in general, don't assume that it's this big complicated thing, but assume it's, it's easy to, uh, at least it's learnable and you there are people who already thought hard about it and, and made tools that make it easier and it, it's actually it's it it is that way so with with testing front-end applications you have tools like playwright which make it really easy to write tests for your front-end application and with with specmatic and uh, certainly other other tools in this area you have tools that make it easy to to even write contract tests so don't assume it's it's so hard and you it's above you so this is i think in general for for learning anything it's it's the mindset that matters and more specifically about about contract testing i think um but well, testing in general or in, and writing large system in general is get more into a, a specification first mindset so there are some that argue that testing is even the, the wrong word for it because because testing somehow feels like something you you only do after you are finished with something and then you test it and make sure that it works correctly. But I think that's that's uh, the wrong way of, of looking at it. I think if you want to get into testing, if you want to apply best practices on how to build on more complex systems like microservices architectures is get into this specification first mindset think in terms of api first so instead of of um you know instead of going right into the code and and write some code and then you you have to later uh, change the code again and, and always do manual testing to make sure if the code that you just wrote and the code that you changed again uh, does what it should do. Turn it uh, or, uh, turn it around and 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 start with the with the specification. Start with thinking about I need the following API and this API needs to solve the the following uh, use cases for uh, certain types of consumers and and how can we how can we um, ensure that that everybody is happy and, and sit together with with the teams that will consume your API and think about what what uh, are the needs that that you need to solve for them, and then come up with the specification, and then and then from the specification you can go to the code, and it will be coding will be a lot easier that way, and and the, the outcome will be a lot better for everybody. So that I think is is my recommendation for people who are who are uh, first of all go the route of building more com complex systems, more distributed systems, and especially for people who want to start with contract testing. Think about the contract as a specification, as, a, as it says, as a contract that must be that must be specified before you really start the, the hard work. And one important point uh, to not get confused by this, this does not mean that this contract is set in stone, so you can always change contracts but everybody has to agree to the changes this is the important part yeah that is excellent i think i'm so happy you brought up two important points right api design first is like i'll go in reverse order api design first does not mean uh, it's waterfallish right it's evolutionary architecture you can iterate on the api design does not mean you have to set in stone on day one i think that's a misconception that does exist so yeah. again thanks for clarifying that and like you said the word testing uh, sometimes can have like other connotations right you know 
even with test driven development as a fan of uh, kentpec myself i always thought of it as test driven design um, it's about the design of your code and your system rather than just writing a unit test uh, and having the contract in place first uh, pushes us to think about the systems we are designing that design is more important and actually the code that comes in place so this mm. is brilliant i think that's great advice i'm sure this will be very useful to our audience and uh, i also love to know as someone who's been using specmatic in anger for some time now uh, what is your feedback uh, for our team anything that we could improve on we'd love to uh, incorporate your thoughts into the into our roadmap and we'd uh, you know love to hear in general about what you think about the tool i'm really a big fan uh, about uh, of of specmatic and how you tackle it because other tools i know for 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 contract testing mostly have their own custom um, um specification format and and i'm a big fan of using using the the default or the the standard uh, open api specification so i think the overall feedback is it's an awesome tool and everybody who who not using it now this should should use it i think for for contract testing and for things that could be improved uh i think there could be more more um more showcases for example how to use it with with a tool uh is it because i'm i'm coming from the front end world how we can use it for for testing our front end applications with with playwright for example and and have more opinion that uh at least recommendations for how to do it and uh and stuff like that i think this would be really valuable valuable for for teams um to 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 have to have something um that they they can look at and and just uh implement it that way and that they don't need to think about this too much themselves so now this it's it's a very flexible tool you can use in a lot of ways and this, this is awesome it's really great and i think that's also a, um it's also a design consideration of yours uh, i guess but uh it helps a lot of teams who are less mature and who who don't know or ha- are new to the topic and who don't have the resources to figure out um, so much stuff for for those people it probably would be very helpful to have like um to have like a, a default way of doing things with certain tools and certain uh frameworks and stuff like that absolutely that's that's point well taken again thanks for the kind words of feedback and i know it is quite lacking in the front end area because again coming from where we are like uh, the yeah. specmatic was predominantly uh, on the back end and then mm-hmm. we constantly been uh, reminded of the fact uh, from you know experts like yourself that it has so much value for the front end engineers mm-hmm. they've always been uh, on the camp of supporting the cause so certainly we need to put our efforts in there and we'll we'll like your idea is correct you know to have that you know some examples which can be directly followed or an opinionated mm-hmm. framework aspect which can be incorporated so that's mm-hmm. certainly something we'll look into i think that that's the beauty of of stagmatic is that although you probably didn't intended to be used also very much by front end engineers it's it's built in a way that it's very easy for for front end engineers to use it for their use cases as well so it's it's really a, a beautiful thing actually i'd be happy to hear if there is anything else that you would leave our audiences with any other uh you know uh, pieces of wisdom that you would like to share with our audience happy to hear that oh i think i want to reiterate two points first of all because i recently as i said i had the experience myself if you First of all, learn new things and go ahead and learn new things and don't be intimidated by by things that that look complicated or have complicated names like um, recently machine learning or also testing is something I know that a lot of people think it, it's so complicated and it's above uh, my head how, how to do it. Don't think that way. Adopt the mindset of everything is easy if you, if you uh, take it step by step. So I think this is one thing I, I want to mention here and yeah and i also want to reiterate think more in terms of specification first especially 
right? The more complex your systems get, you work on, the more important it is to, to turn it on its head and, and think about the specification first before going too deep into implementation stuff. And as you already also wonderfully pointed out, don't think that this means in turn that you have to know everything perfectly before you get started. Uh, that's not the point here. The point is that you have a, a solid base where to start and that you have the Actually, it's, it's quite the opposite. With, with contracts in place, with specif specifications in, in place, you have one, uh, one, one source of truth where you, can, where you can make changes and actually propagate those easily to, to the rest of the system. So actually, working specification first makes it easier for you to make changes in the future. So adopt this mindset, the more complex your, your systems get, the, the more important is, is it to, to think about specifications. Thanks again for your time, Marcus, and I'm sure our audience will benefit greatly from this conversation of ours. And uh, yeah, and we'd like to thank you on behalf of the team. And for our audience, do like and subscribe to our channel so we could have more such distinguished guests as Marcus uh, in the future. So thank you. Thank you for having me.